Today we are going to talk about the Harley Road Glide and why we will never ride it again. So let us begin. Harley Davidson has made a name for itself by consistently releasing high quality grand touring motorcycles. And the models on offer here are representative of the brand's storied heritage in this regard. However, the motor company claims both performance and image, and their ST versions are aimed at the high-performance V-twin bagger craze that has been sweeping the grassroots for years. The Moto America King of the Baggers racing series has converted a phenomenon that was once considered obscure into a mainstream sport. From the high banks of Daytona International Speedway to those of WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, the 2018 edition of King of Baggers will feature no less than six rounds. In fact, Moto America Superbike leader Kyle Wyman rode a fully factory Harley Davidson Screamin' Eagle to victory in the first ever King of the Baggers Championship. There is little doubt that this endeavor would serve as inspiration for any performance bagger that Harley produces and sells to the public. Harley's optional safety tech package for the newest Glide Cruiser includes cornering enhanced linked ABS and traction control, as well as drag torque slide control. By synchronizing engine RPM with rear wheel spin, reduces the impact of rapid deceleration caused by downshifts. Such an electrical package, known as an RDRS, short for Reflex Defensive Rider System, can be found on many current motorcycles. Tucked away in plain sight beneath the classic sheet metal of this hog, the kit provides a marginal but significant advantage in the war against relaxed but spirited cruising and broken bones. Even when traction is low, the enormous blue monster is held in check by RDRS. Who are you to label someone a prehistoric reptile? Simply said, we've always preferred the road glide despite the fact that it's a bit clumsy in appearance. Its large front fairing is mounted to the frame rather than the 49mm fork, making it appear lighter than its 900 pound wet weight would indicate. This floating barge has surprising maneuverability because of its strategic positioning. Harley's rubber-mounted 114 CI Big Twin provides the necessary power, maintaining its retro feel with oil and air cooling, and produces 118 pound-feet of torque at 3,250 RPM. The Milwaukee 8 117 found in the ST model, which was released in 2016, produces 127 pound-feet of torque at 3,750 RPM and 106 horsepower at 4,800 RPM making the 114 a more modest powertrain. But the 114 still exudes a healthy dose of thumping charm, especially in the grunty bottom end where most of the pushing takes place. Short shifting the six speed will keep you in the engine's torquey power band long enough to keep it hurrying along before it's time to upshift, which is useful when merging with large trucks. You'll learn to ignore the gear shift indication because it only lights up when the clutch is released, defeating its purpose. The gearbox is still rough in comparison to other recent motorcycles, making a fairly audible metal-on-metal -metal clunk when shifting. But if you crank the stereo, the noise disappears. The glide suspension is lower than that of Harley's more upright touring bikes, with just 4.6 inches of front travel and 2.1 inches at the rear. While the relatively low-profile Dunlops provide a solid ride and sufficient bump absorption for most surfaces, they can be unsettling when impacted by potholes. When opposed to the higher tourers, the Milwaukee Engine 8's guards are angled forward, making it easier to reach the rear brake and gear shifter with large feet. The saddlebags have an unimpressive 2.7 cubic feet of space, so your belongings will need to be crammed in there. The 6.5-inch TFT display bring a touch of modernity to this otherwise classic exterior. The two speakers are loud enough to compete with the rumble of the V-twin engine at speeds below interstate speeds, but you may annoy other drivers if you crank up the volume. When riding the Road Glide Special back up the mountains, it can seem like you're riding a fish out of water on sweepers that were built for sport bikes weighing half as much. Harley lists 31 degrees as the maximum lean angle to the left and 32 degrees to the right, and riders are encouraged to take a strategic approach when cornering. Plan ahead, apply pressure to the four piston Brembos early, and make your arc as smooth as possible so as not to upset the laid back chassis. Too much speed into a turn will make you feel like a dancing hippopotamus on an obstacle course. Just the perfect amount, and you'll be able to relax as this stately vehicle cuts through the asphalt with ease. The engine has a pleasant, identifiable Harley sound without being overly boomy, and the street bike's other systems, 
torquey prowess, a hefty click of the shifter, and slick steering work together in nice harmony. When you have a good attitude and reasonable expectations for your trip, you may have a good time everywhere, from the busy streets of the big city to the winding motorways on the outskirts of town. While the package's electrical features were reassuring on low friction roads, albeit we would have experienced diminishing results with a large enough ice path, they feel a lot more at home in the city. The low saddle height of 26.1 inches makes it easy to control at stoplights, while the long wheelbase and broad stance give it a lot of road presence and adequate wind protection in case you manage to weave through traffic and reach higher speeds. The 11.8 inch 300 mm discs are clamped by Brembo four piston calipers with braided lines for reliable stopping power. These same specifications apply to the single brake in the back. There is a 130-60-19 bias ply tire up front and a 180-55-18 in the back. The approximately $28,000 Road Glide Special is not the best of the best, or the limited production CBO model, but it is beautiful enough to be noticeable without being so expensive that it cannot be used for everyday purposes. The Road Glide Special modifications modernize its historic bones just enough to keep it competitive despite its meager storage space making it more of a style statement than an A to B workhorse. The rivalry from rivals like the Indian is fiercer than ever for Harley today. However, the Motor Company's Road Glide special bikes serve as a reminder of the brand's strengths. Smooth and surprisingly nimble for its heft, this heavyweight package will win over even the most jaded of riders. So what is the verdict? There is no consensus among Harley-Davidson fans on this matter as the question is heavily weighted by personal preferences and aesthetics. When riding in high gusts, we found that the Street Glide's bar-mounted fairing provided undesired inputs to the steering and that we much preferred the increased stability of the Road Glide. Improved rider comfort is another benefit of the Road Glide's triple-split steam-vented fairing. The Street Glide, however, is easier to maneuver in congested areas thanks to its reduced weight and the fairing that is mounted directly to the handlebar. Its batwing fairing is appealing to certain people. So that is all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. 